Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Today we're back at Trilogy Farms in their new awesome shop here, and we are going to do a little bit more work on the combine. Um, got exhaust manifold gaskets blown out, blown out. I think it's just on the number one port, but the gaskets, you know, <laughs> done for. So, you know, that's my favorite job. No, but anyway, we're going to get into it. So, let's tool up and uh, let's check this out. All right, well, I forgot my cool CLC tool bag at the shop, so the old Milwaukee one's gonna have to do. So we're gonna load this thing up with some weapons for this job. So the first thing I'm gonna grab is my 3 8 socket rail. There, should have most of the 3 8 stuff that we need. Check. Put that in the bag. Man, I wish I would've brought my other tool bag. Oh well. Nipex Cobra plier, sure. What else do we need? Um, let's grab these wrench pliers. What else do we need? Plier wise. I think that should be good. But I'll probably skip something. Um, probably gonna need trim sticks. Yep. Gonna need hose picks. Uh, let's grab three flavors. Snap on hose picks there. Let's see. Probably gonna need that guy. Um, probably gonna need that guy. What else do we need? Sure. Let's bust out the high speed quarter inch. Put him on the job. Um, Let's get a swivel 13, quarter inch, gear inch. That might come in handy. Maybe a 10. Yep. Definitely gonna need 3 8 5 16 quarter inch drive. Sure. What else do we want? I don't think we need anything else from there okay mm. i don't think we'll need any pinch off players let's grab some wrenches here let's Okay, here's my standard wrenches. I'm uh, gonna need a 15 16 four way. Probably a 7 8. Probably a 3 quarter. And 5 8. Sure. That should cover us on wrenches. We might need. A bigger 15 16 here. Probably a 7 8 And a probably a 3 quarter. Okay. Gonna need some metric weapons here. Mm, let's grab the Matco new wrenches. Gear wrenches. Um. Probably gonna need, let's grab a 10, a 13 standard, and a 15 standard. Sure, I know we're gonna need a double box 15. Gear inch one, yep. Mm -hmm. Gonna need that. What else do we want? 
should be good on wrenches, I think. I think we're gonna need some snips for zip ties, you know, flush cutters, snap on. Never know when you're gonna run into a random zip tie. What else do we need? Guess I forgot extensions. Let's grab that one. That one. That one. That should cover us. Let's get a couple long. Let's try a long half inch drive. You never know when we're gonna have to get mean with stuff. All right, shove those in the bag. All right, let's pick out some weapons here. Stubby. Yep. Mid torque. Probably gonna need it. Snap on light. Yep. Another light in case that one goes dead. Sure. Milwaukee M12 floodlight. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have lighting covered. Sure. Uh, Extended reach, three eighths, 90 degree impact. Yep. Uh, battery for that. Battery for the ratchet. What else? Oh, I'm gonna need a hammer. Mm-hmm. Gonna need dry bars. You'll find out later. thinking, wow, so much tools for exhaust manifold, but you gotta realize, gotta drain all the coolant, gotta take thermostat housings off, radiator hoses, turbos gotta come off, EGR coolers gotta come off, and then you can take the exhaust manifold off. So it takes a lot of tooling, so we got a bag full of hand tools. Gosh, I wish I would've brought my other bag. That's just a nightmare. Got a magnetic tray for bolts, magnetic tray for tools, I'm gonna put all these power tools in that bag. Now that we got all the tools up here, got all the Milwaukee products you could possibly desire to do this job, I will use every one of those, I promise. Got my magnet tray set up here on the fuel tank and a little gear wrench pad, you know, sit on for my knees. Now we have to strip down all the shields, air cleaner, all this stuff's gotta go. But you see me do that, so music time lapse? Yep. Okay, so that's a lot of shields that you got to take off to, you know, to finally get to. Oh, hey, there's an engine. So now, what we're going after 
is this exhaust manifold here. And it's got the shorter studs on it. So when you got the shorter studs, when you remove the exhaust manifold, you gotta extract all the studs and go to the longer studs and spacers for more clamping force. But I don't know if you can see that. But see that gasket sticking out? Yeah, and it's all black right there. She's blowed out. So, but <clears throat> in order to get this out, of course, we're going to pull the VGT turbo off. You got to take the EGR cooler off. And you got to take this thermostat housing off because the exhaust manifold won't clear it, especially when you put the longer studs in there. So basically, we got to peel all of this stuff off next. But first, I'm going to soak everything down in seafoam deep creep. It's the best penetrant oil I've ever used. I mean, Croil's pretty good, but uh, I really like this stuff. It makes a difference. So I'm just going to soak everything down, especially these stupid bolts here. I know I will break those, and I'll be drilling and tapping and cussing and it won't be pretty. Alright, so let's take these turbo pipe clamps off. Probably wondering why I grabbed the pry bars. That's why. Now you don't want to take these off with impacts because it'll actually ruin the clamp. Yes, I usually put new clamps on, but you know, you could save it for a spare. You never know when you're going to need it. If you spin that real fast with a, an impact, it'll actually gall the threads up. We got the charge air pipe off. We're gonna take the coolant lines out of the turbo actuator. Where's the zip tie? I knew it. I'm gonna unplug the turbo speed sensor here. Boop. Just gonna need to take that air cleaner or the intake air pipe off. Next. These are 15s using a semi deep snap on impact swivel. And this bracket will come off. Just gonna let it hang out right there for now. Wonder if this is oh yeah. Semi deep for the win. We'll loosen this line. I reckon wibble it out of the way for now. Get this off here. Take this coolant inlet pipe off for the EGR cooler. Oh, first bolt I dropped, that's pretty good. Okay. 
gasket right there. We got some room to get in here. Take these turbo drain lines off. supply come on be nice to me that's why I sprayed it but they never come out oh. oh finally those always always fight you I'm dropping stuff. Get that guy out of our way. Let's see how well the seafoam deep creep did. Normally I have to heat these with map gas, but we'll see if the seafoam deep creep did its job here. Oh, would you look at that? That's amazing. I normally have to heat that with map gas and get it red hot and then try to crack them loose. That's, that's impressive. Of course, the double box 15 worth its weight in gold. Work it a little bit. Two for two. I am impressed. That is called winning right there. I just don't believe it. Oh, I got room to swing. I don't like doing this, but I ain't got no angle dangle. Will the Matco fit in there? It's kind of a tight clearance. By golly. Like a dream. Four out of four without heating. I'm impressed. Okay. Turbo's ready to come off. Alright, so now the turbo has been deleted. Now we gotta go after the CGR cooler because when we put the new longer studs on, you gotta go on straight. Well, you hit here. You hit on the thermostat housing, so you gotta take the EGR cooler off, take these straps off, this pipe, take this clamp off. Luckily, this has the new updated EGR cooler that clamps on here instead of bolts on so that's a plus you got the new style sensing tube as well take these two pipes off when you take these lines off here always Put a new flat face over ring on. Even if you think it's still good. Because if you, that O-ring blows, you talk about an oil mess that you do not want to deal with. One time I did that on a, like a 9460R, I felt the O-ring, I'm like, yeah, it feels good. Actually, that, this one feels pretty flattened, but anyway, that one I thought felt good. Put this on, tighten it down, fired up the tractor, that o-ring popped and it sprayed black oil across the carpet I had laying on the tire and then went all over my gear wrench service cart. 
it even sprayed up. I had an unload auger swung over the tractor, sprayed the auger above the tractor all over the windshield. It was a mess. So no matter what, those get new O-rings. So got a swivel. I'm not going to take it out of that turbo, but just get it kind of out of my way here. Of course, they got the fuel lines here in the way of the strap bolts. Well, poop, that fuel line needs replaced. I just poked the crap out of my finger on one of these barbs. But I don't like that. So I know I'm gonna have to order a new charger gasket. I didn't get one of those, but I need to order one of these lines too. So I just make a note as I go and then write stuff down. And then, you know, before three o'clock, I always make sure that I get my parts ordered in because I'm gonna get them for next day. Seven eighths, 22, same thing. Well, crying in the mud. You know what? Let's get this, let's get this pipe off of here. Are you guys seeing how handy impact swivels are now and how much I use them? It's a must have, you're gonna use them you might as well buy good ones that are going to last or you can get replaced easily. <clears throat> okay. There. That pipe's out of the way. We'll change that gasket later. Okay, well there's a, a coolant outlet pipe down on the bottom here. And, uh, of course, there's the engine wiring harness in the way to get to it. It's got a clamp right here that I'm going to take off. I did just go order this fuel line and some other parts that I forgot we're going to need on this project. I hate this bolt with a passion. On a tractor, it's not too bad. Maybe. Well, I think we're on it. Oh, sometimes that one there can fight you. Just a little 13 down there. Yep. Clamp was 11. Well, we got the clamp loose. Figured I need to go ahead and take this U-pipe off, but these bolts right here, I just, I never have good luck with them, ever. I did soak them down with the special sauce, but I just, I'm gonna give her a little tug here. Nope. How about you? Oh no. I mean, I could just leave that on there. It's just kind of going to make my life difficult with some other things. But if I break these bolts off here, I'm going to spend hours drilling them out. Because I'll put a link to a video where I dealt with this before and it was not fun. Those bolts do not come out. You have to drill them out completely and re-tap the threads. And, we're gonna just try to avoid that whole situation. So now we're gonna take these <clears throat> EGR cooler straps off here. Let's see if I can sneak this. I'm dropping stuff. These you save. Just fall on the floor, why don't you? This is my favorite one. Come on. Oops. 
So I might have to pull this EGR cooler out. I know it's going to drip all over me. I'm going to get into the proper position. That was a good time to look inside of there. Make sure it's dry. All right, so now we're gonna take off this pipe here and we're gonna take off all the thermostat housing stuff. So cue the music. Okay, thermostat housing is removed, but you know, we gotta go one more deep. As you can see, see this little hump right here? This little hump right there is the reason why you can't get this exhaust manifold out, especially when you have the longer studs. You just, you can't do it. So this is gonna have to come off anyway, so now there's a coolant bypass tubes that are bolted in the head that we got to get out because it's attached to that. And then there's Allen bolts holding that to the head. So let's get that done. You can see a little better. See these gaskets are layered. That's yeah, just blown out, blown out completely right there. But you can see all the black sooty marks everywhere. So now we just gotta take out all the the nuts and yank this thing off, leaving that U-pipe on. You can just stay there, little buddy. All right, this is where the Gen 2 mid-torque comes in. Swivels for the win. Sipping those right off. Stupid coolant bypass tubes. Ugh. You haven't lived until you've messed with those. Where is blazing those off? And here we go. Oh, 
Come on. Get shit out of here. It's heavy. Nowhere to set it. Yeah. There's one layer of it. Let's see. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? Okay. Now comes the fun part. We got to extract all these studs. So I'm going to go ahead and soak them all down real good with the special sauce. And I'm going to pack up my tools because actually I have an hour drive here and an hour drive back. So there goes two hours of the day. So I got a mess up here is what I'm saying. And I got to pack it all up and drive an hour back to the shop. So soak all these studs down. We'll come back in the morning and go into full attack mode. Well, here's the aftermath. It's usually what you end up with. That, th this right here, these and these, that's just the bolts I had to take off to get the shields off. That. This is just engine bolts. All right, well, it's tool time. So on this half of the video, we're gonna be covering um, the, the cab of my service truck and the left side. And then we'll be doing another video on of installing the exhaust manifold. And then I'll cover the other half of the truck. Um, I'm not gonna go as in depth as the first um, tool truck tour that I did. Um, if you guys wanna see that, I'll post a, a link to where you guys can watch a more in depth feature. Um, I'm just kind of going to briefly go through it and go through all the updated changes, shall we? All right, so in the cab of the truck behind the seat, I keep this new M18 Milwaukee rocket light. That's super handy for working in a dark shed or working later at night when you need some light on the situation. Um, that thing works really good. I did use it a lot on the, uh, the S770 rotor job and it did it was really nice for lighting up a big area on that um, here behind the seat i keep my three-quarter snap-on tech angle torque wrench so mainly bought this for torquing wheels and um, it allows me to do torque turn on some certain bolts on 9rx's and stuff but i do use the crap out of this thing um, it'll do 30 to 600 foot pounds so that stays behind the seat back here. I can tuck three quarter tech angle in there in that rocket light and put the seat back. Here we've got a snap on click type half inch and that is a, another half inch tech angle, um, 300 foot pound half inch. Um, that is a Milwaukee bore scope. And then I keep my tech bag in between the seats. Um, I kind of did a in depth tour of that on the first video so i'm not going to go into that if you guys want to see what's all in the tech bag you can look in there it's basically all my electrical testing equipment edl dvoms test leads uh, a lot of tools to take apart a cab stuff like that back in here you know laptop stand two cell phone mounts um, i keep my milwaukee inverter in here because you know um youtuber got to keep all my devices charged plug in a laptop stuff like that works really great for that i've got another inverter down there and you know other than that that's pretty much the the cab just wanted to show what i keep behind the seats that's where the real stuff's at so we're going to go into this first compartment here you can see i got my got my family hanging out with me all day and that's my, my buddy Jake that passed away. He was my best friend. I uh, keep him on my service truck all the time. Kind of remind me of why I do this. So keep these little Harbor Freight lights in here so you can light that up. Of course, we got a camera mount that I use for YouTubing. 
half inch drive snap on ratchets. And then there's a bunch of different extensions, half inch drive, impact, wobble, extra long, you name it. A couple blow guns. And then in here are all my most used pliers. Got them on a plier rack. I got carpet laying on top of this and everything stays in place. This is like the one thing that doesn't move in my truck for some reason. And got a couple Allen wrench sets that I put magnetic tape on, snapped them to the wall. Some snap-on feeler gauges. I probably went over this on the first bit video, but you guys wanted to see some special tools that I have on my truck. My dad made this socket for me. So this will take a 70 millimeter nut off a reverser on a combine. Works pretty awesome. Yeah, those are my most used pliers. You know, Nipex wrench pliers, all the Cobra pliers, flush cutters, long needle nose, snips, you name it. We got it up there. Vice grips, hose pliers, hose cutters. Up in the top, we got some test leads. Got a filter strap. All right there. Here I keep my three quarter snap on bar that I can attach a um, ratchet head or a breaker bar head onto. We'll see that here in a minute. Over on the left hand side, I've got some pads for my knees. Top driller. Now I haven't had time to organize or clean nothing. You guys are seeing this truck in its raw form. Okay. So in here is a little bit of everything. Air hammer, of course, some different uh, adapters to work in customers' shops that have different air fittings than I do. So keep a couple different ones of those. Scrapers, um, air chucks. This is a cool tool most people might not know about. This is a carbide scraper. This works really good in getting in tight areas and getting you know, gasket scrape maybe around a stud or a, a dowel hole or something. These are really good. And then you can flip these blades around. And I believe that's a blue point. And we got a bunch of different air hammer bits, rosebud, a bunch of different files, ratcheting tap handle. We got some extra taps and large extractors down here. Um, Mayhew punches alignment punches here so these are new this wasn't on the first tour so these are mayhew alignment punches some more um, mayhew pilot punches some mayhew center punches here some left-handed drill bits snap on chisel and punch set some more roll pin drivers round file razors under here are some more dowels and stuff that i had made now, I'll never get this door to shut ever again, probably. Yeah, anyway, bunch of stuff in my top drawer. Okay, second drawer. Screwdrivers and picks. There you go. So, snap-on radiator and hose picks. Here, these are my most commonly use small picks right there even have extra bits on hand to change them out if i break them um we got a mixture of pittsburgh and snap-on trim sticks right here and then a full set of gear inch long o-ring picks um, some pittsburgh o-ring picks kind of got a round flat head on them so you don't cut anything Full set of snap-on screwdrivers, ratcheting screwdriver, gear inch ratcheting screwdriver, the set of small screwdrivers from snap-on, stubbies. Um, these are a bunch of different custom pocket sticks that I've made for certain applications. All kind of fell in there. Um, and then we've got a bunch of long-handled picks and stuff. All right, so third drawer, ratchets and extensions. So this is where I keep all my 3 8 ratchets. Um, mainly snap on in here, but, uh, got some Harbor Freight stuff in there as well. Kind of some specialty stuff, you know, swivel head. This is another swivel head. Don't use them very often, but they're in there. So mostly I use snap on stuff. 3 8 extensions, every flavor. Quarter inch ratchets, mainly all snap on. One Pittsburgh Pro in there. 
all the quarter inch uh, quarter drive extensions down there all the quarter inch ratchet extensions right here um, some adapters and turn tools a um, bunch of different adapters these are some shims for setting backlash on tree augers and stuff here we got the uh, quarter inch high speed ratchet with a new 2.5 battery so that's new that wasn't always in here um i did have some air ratchets over here but i uh, bought this and i use it so much i decided you know it needed a place right there so keep that handy fourth drawer three eighths quarter inch drive sockets standard metric six point twelve point quarter inch drive impact swivels gear inch set that's new that's that's a real nice set 12 point mac hose you got some standard deep impacts these are tap sockets snap on quarter inch air ratchet blue point air ratchet um quarter inch drive standard metric snap on all my chrome sockets in here are snap on um bunch of different crow's feet in here regular 12 point line wrenches standard metric a bunch of different ones here you got just about every size you can imagine for crow's feet in here all right fire drawer oh it's packed so this is the stuff that i don't get as often but i still use a lot so um got a seal puller there's transmission snap ring pliers um, large internal and external snap ring pliers they're under there somewhere with these big handles i'm not going to dig all this stuff out because then i'll never get this drawer shut anyway long trim stick um, hose clamp cable pliers some snap-on brushes vice grips and extra long needle nose a bunch of different needle nose and pinch off pliers and snap on snap ring pliers and hose clamp pliers and criminal terminal crimps and those are some thread files oh you guys want to see specialty stuff there you go this is an egr valve puller for a 13.5 tier 3 engine right there here's some uh starter wrenches some John Deere starter inches, so those are specialty. There we go. All right, bottom drawer, three-quarter drive. So this is that ratchet head that goes on to that handle there. There's the breaker bar head for it. Um, so these are new. This is a, a full set of Tecton three-quarter drive deep impact standard and metric and then it has the the rails for them um, to hold them and that cheap was real affordable i think they around 150 170 bucks per set so I, I think it was around 300 bucks for both sets for the tecton impacts but really nice they'll go all the way up to two inch in here um, got a bunch of adapters and random things. Here is a special tool for you. This is to get couplers out, hydraulic couplers out of the, the single point of a combine. And this is a bunch of homemade, this is a homemade extension I use for the chopper belts on this series. So it's 18 millimeter, it's 17 inches long. Um, got the long 24, that's a John Deere tool long 18 that's a john deere tool and then i have a full set of these on the service cart too and i forgot to talk about that um this is a 30 millimeter extra long um, for tensioning like 60 and 70 series uh combine rotor belts they'll fit in there we got some three-quarter drive extensions and then we got the big sun x set of crow's feet half inch drive um all the way up to two and a quarter Okay, so, you know, that's the main box on the truck where I put a lot of my hand tools. Oh, got a snap-on magnet tray. Really, really like those. Use those a lot. Let's go in the second door. So here, my batteries are dead and my switches. Haven't got to that yet. 
this is where we got all a bunch of of the sockets I use all the time that are on mechanics time saver magnetic rails so 3 8 half inch drive is all up here standard and metric we've got a gear inch um, this is new the this is their new extractor set comes with drill bits and the extractors and these are super strong I really like those extractors and then I think there's some magnet trays snapped around um, down here tape measures gotta have a metric tape so this is all my bit sets so we've got allen's torx e torx triple square extra long you name it is in here there's a extra, there's deep half inch drive we got more half inch drive impact sockets some extra swivel sockets big allen's some specialty sockets in there three quarter injector line socket that's a that's a set of tecton 12 point impact sockets back there and then under here is all kinds of stuff but what's new that's a flex probe kit that's got all my john deere test leads in there it's a very expensive set there um, so we we'll got these new gear wrench pullers ratcheting pullers really handy for getting like sprockets off the cross augers and stuff I'm really liking these using these a lot another thing new is we got a set of their Tecton long 3H drive Allen's really nice set super affordable comes in a nice case and then I think I went more into depth on this on the first tour I'm not really gonna grab everything out of here but this is where all the stuff with cases kind of goes in here we got some more drill bits and extra taps and extractors and there's all kinds of stuff in here of course we got another snap-on magnet tray on the side there here's the where the wrenches are there so on these drawer units I know someone's gonna ask they're SeaTech manufacturing drawer units uh, we got a snap-on 3 8 tech angle I keep a bunch of zip ties and a rivet gun and stuff tucked in that hole um, the top drawer this is new I foamed it out Kaizen tool foam you get it off a of Home Depot online you get it in three different thicknesses this is 50 millimeter um, I don't have as much uh, standard wrenches don't need that as much so I was able to foam it in four-way angles line wrenches there's a mixture of regular and ratchet wrenches all snap on there this took me some time to get this done here's that that uh williams 15 16 that i use for unload chains battery uh, terminal tool and this is for r12 systems and then full set of john deere ratchet wrenches there and then we go all the way up to inch and a half, inch and seven sixteenths. I stacked them too deep in there. So yeah, I really like the way that this turned out. Um, if you look at my previous video, you'll kind of see the before and after. But these things don't go nowhere now, and I can tell when one's missing. Now, metric drawer, I can't do that. There's just way... Too many wrenches in here you wouldn't be able to foam it out you kind of have to pick and choose see this is what my drawer normally looks like when i get it out everything's all moved around it's one thing nice about foaming out the drawers but so here's those new matco wrenches i was talking about gear wrenches really nice but i've got all snap on pretty much underneath it there's some gear wrench stuff here and there but like 13 millimeters i'll have one two three four different 13s right in a row you know there's three different tens 
So I stack a lot of my most used wrenches with each other. And that goes all the way up to 18, you know, 18 snap-ons under there. Um, this goes all the way to 24. There's two 24s back here because you always need two of them, right? And you got a set of stubbies, ratcheting wrenches. These are just Pittsburgh Pro. You know, I don't use them very often, but they're, they're handy. Some more snap-on wrenches. I go all the way down to a six millimeter wrench. This is a full, uh, these are my metric line wrenches here. And then we got a bunch of ratchet wrenches of sizes that I don't normally use or extras, backups, one should say. So there's John Deere ones in there too, kind of a mixture. And then a set of double box offset. Um, these are from O'Reilly's and I got them for like 26 bucks and really like them work really great and then here we have another 1719 offset snap-on that i use for injectors um, valve lash on 13 fives and there's some more pittsburgh pro ratchet wrenches kind of laying down in there but down here we've got double box wrenches that i use a lot some are flex head, some are not. So this is new, this is a 30 millimeter uh, ratchet wrench flex. I got it off of Amazon for like 30 bucks, but I use that for tensioning feeder house chains when I can't get a impact in there. And then this goes all the way up to 32. Um, we got some S wrenches in here and a moon wrench. So yeah, a lot of wrenches in the metric drawer. So underneath, Got some more double box offset from O'Reilly's. These are the standard ones. And then we got a full set of Tecton four-way angle wrenches. These are really nice. Got all the way up to 50 millimeter. I go from 24 to 50 millimeter. I got a John Deere 36 millimeter wrench down in there. Um, got a full set of Sun X angle wrenches up to inch and a quarter in that roll. These are the cut level one gloves I use all the time. Cotter pen set, keep a bunch of different cotter pens and S hooks right here, ready to go. Electrical tape, easy to reach. Um, mini pipe wrench, crescent wrenches. There's all kinds of stuff in here. There's uh, 16 inch cover pliers, 22 inch cover pliers. We got the snap on PWZs. Here, you gotta check these out. These are mean sons of guns. There you go, PWZ fours. So that sucker is big and it works kind of like a pipe wrench, but better. So use that for stuff that sees you can put some serious force on this thing and it'll grip and not slip and then down there you got the, the pwz threes the smaller pair big crescent wrench jumbo wrenches all the way to two inch in there a big pipe wrench and back there is the the, the god wrench i call it my dad made it it's a that green wrench back there it's three and a half inches i use on 8R fan drives for holding the shiv so I can break the bolt loose. My dad made that for me. And then there we got the uh, dial indicator set. So yeah, there's more in depth, but this is what's new there. And the four way angles are new. Cool time. Hey, Patty. Hi. Ooh. Uh, I'll give you, uh, Patty's trying to buy that toolbox? Uh, by, uh, so the price of a 12 piece semi deep set is 300 bucks. Well, that's nice. I'll give you $300 off. It's $1,210. 17000 You get that set for Woof. no hutch. No hutch. It it's pretty, time. though. It is. It is pretty. It is pretty. So there's the three sets of socks. Oh, man. So here's, the here's the two PWZ twos. Mm -hmm. I don't have the twos, Josh. George. You got the threes and the fours. You guys use six and seven lines. But they're green. These are orange. Yeah. Mm. 
Wow. In your top drawer back there in the metric. That table. magnet is insane. Mm -hmm. Got all kinds of toys in here. Oh boy. Okay. How much yeah. you the snap on there got me. Now we got the twos. So we got two, three, and four. So should have the PWZs covered. See how that happens? Okay. So in the back compartment, it's a mess. So I keep rags and obviously trash from jobs kind of right here. Heavy duty wipes, there's first aid kit, some glass cleaner, all purpose cleaner, um, some nitrile gloves, tool bag you see me use on the, uh, the exhaust manifold job right there. This is a gear inch tap and die set. This is a uh, radiator wands. We sell these at Swan Express, work really good. There's water and air. Put those in there, kind of tucked in. Back there, we got the new gear wrench slide hammer kit. Here, um, we got a bunch of pack outs set out in here. Uh, well, I shouldn't say they're not actually pack out because they don't have the attachment on the bottom. These are Milwaukee organizers, I should say. So electrical, got a bunch of different connectors, butt connectors, fuses, and RWAs. You know, they got the terminal already on the wire. RWA is repair wiring assembly. So I got a bunch of different RWAs in there. Some soldering stuff. And in here, you know, we got metric bolts, carriage bolts and standard bolts, metric nuts, miscellaneous hardware, and shop supplies. So keep everything organized, ready to go. When I need some bolts, so I just pull out the bolt one. Pull out the metric bolts and metric nuts a lot. Um, got some air wands, straight edge in there. Keep a extra long three quarter drive extension in there and another long air wand above the wrench drawer. Keep my dirty rags back there. So yeah, that's what's in the back compartment. So I know I kind of went through that kind of fast and um, there's a lot of stuff in there. I mean, if I had to tell you everything that was in there, I'd be just doing a truck tour all day, but you know, you guys want to see repairs and tools. So I gave you both. So I hope you guys enjoyed the cab of the truck and the left-hand side, which is a lot of my main tools. Um, we still got to cover what's in the bed. And um, there's a bunch of different pack out stuff there. Um, some ridge boxes. And then on the right hand side of the truck, we'll be going into the Milwaukee stuff. Um, a little bit more specialty stuff on the right hand side. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, keep that green iron moving.